back everybody. On deck today for review is the quote unquote Yugo, although we know Yugoslavia does not exist anymore, OPAP. This one has been requested by a lot of viewers out there to review this rifle. The reason is right now these rifles are being brought in large quantities and they have a pretty good reputation out there as a well built like AK, especially for the money. These things are coming to market generally under $600 in most places, especially if you watch for sales. So. Basically what I'm going to do today is we're going to do some shooting with it, uh, let you know what I think of it overall, talk about some of the pros and cons of it, and uh, that'll pretty much do it. But I can tell you right now, things built like a tank, for the money, it is one of the better AKs out there. So we're going to go ahead and just keep shooting it throughout the video here, talk about, like I said, the pros and cons, and uh, then step inside and take a closer look at it. So that's what's coming up next here on the uh, Mr. Guns and Gear channel, guys. Time for a little accuracy testing here. We have a 123 grain full metal jacket, Red Army Standard. This is the uh, lacquered case version in the rifle. And uh, we got a target down range, 100 meters, and we'll see what we can do uh, from this rest. Obviously the shadowy conditions here aren't the best. I'm really just trying to make excuses in case I jack this group up, but let's see what we get, guys. see well we pretty much got exactly what I expected this is our three shot group right here one here here and another one over here so looks like we had right about a three inch group which is pretty much what I expected that's certainly not match grade ammo and uh, the AK is not really a match grade rifle I've shot this a few times off camera as well it's pretty much my repeatable results there it's what I get just about every time so three inch group with uh, standard you know steel cased ammo can't really complain about that with the 7.62 by 3.9 AK. One of the more common complaints you'll hear about the rifle is what's called Yugo Cheek Slap. That's due to the non-standard AK stock that's on here. Um, that's one of the things a lot of folks like. A lot of folks like it when shooting from the prone. A lot of folks don't like it when shooting standing or seated like I was just doing right there. But really, the only way to avoid it is to have proper cheek weld. So what you want to do, you know, if you guys are new to platform, as this kind of is an entry level AK, a lot of new shooters are going to be picking this one up. What you want to do is bring the rifle to your eyes essentially, not bring your eyes to the rifle. So you don't want to be like this because that will cause the Yugo cheek slap coming in your face. But if you get a good stance, orient your body down range, lean into it, get that good cheek weld, bring the rifle up to your face, you'll probably avoid it altogether. So that's what you want to do in order to avoid the Yugo cheek slap. We're out here to do a little night shooting with that slant break to show you guys just what kind of a signature you're going to get. The ammo in there is some Red Army Standard 7.62 obviously, 123 grain. We're going to go ahead and see what kind of a muzzle blast this sucker produces here at night. These rifles were brought in with double stack bolts, at least the new ones now, the new ones that you're going to find out there. So they'll take any AK magazine, AK-47 pattern magazine that is, any standard one out there to include these drums like this Romanian one that we have here. And you guys have seen several throughout the video. You've seen some Bakelites, some Chinese, and some uh, Yugoslavian as well thrown in there just for, uh, just to boot if you will. But that's a good thing about these. One of the criticisms in the past with the uh, imported rifles from uh, former Yugoslavia was that the magazines, or the bolt, excuse me, wasn't standard, but they fixed that. Magazine well standard, bolt standard, it's all good, so no issues there like there used to be. All right, let's talk about reliability. This rifle, like you'd expect from any sort of AK variant, has been 100% reliable. With any ammo I've put through it, so far we've shot Golden Tiger, uh, Brown Bear, both full metal jacket and soft points, as well as the uh, Red Army standard ammo that we're shooting in there right now. With any uh, Comblock mag, well really with any mag I've put it in so far, it's been 100% reliable. Not a single failure, just as you'd expect from your uh, AK pattern rifles out there. Time to get into the details. Let's tackle the stock first. The stock is one of the many features in this gun that is not 
uh, similar to what you'll find on other AKM pattern rifles out there. It has that hump there that we talked about earlier with the eagle cheek slap that some people complain about. It does come in unfinished, and there is a number here. Generally, the number stamped in the stock does not match the gun. I don't know of one that's come in recently that does. They may be out there, but don't expect that number to match. Um, the stock there has a rubber butt pad, as you see here, and of note, it does not have a rear uh, sling attachment point. The pistol grip that it comes with is a U.S.-made part added by Century, along with the slant brake. Uh, piston and the trigger group for 922R compliance. That said, it does mirror what you're going to see on a lot of the original Serbian rifles out there. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. It sure, sure is a lot better than the standard peg grip that a lot of AKs come with, but honestly, I'll probably throw a Magpul grip on there or a US Palm down the road. The safety, like many things on this rifle, is extremely tight. That's due to the Yugo build tolerances. They're very good compared to other AK variants out there on the market. Um, moving it takes a little bit more force than what you get from a re regular uh, AK pattern rifle. That said, with a little bit of filing and polishing, you can uh, make it move very freely. Of note, there are only two positions here on this civilian version. And this little piece there is a little bit longer than what you're going to see on the military version because there are three positions on the military version and only two on the civilian version. This rifle is heavy. It's a lot heavier than a lot of AK variants out there. One of the reasons is what you see right here. This bulge front trunnion is also known as RPK style front trunnion. Very thick and it adds a lot of uh, weight and strength to the, where the receiver meets up with the barrel. Some people say that it increases accuracy. Honestly, I don't know. I've never seen it personally like you saw out there. This rifle shooting about three inch groups, which is pretty uh, on par with a lot of other AK variants out there. Generally, if you're talking about a 7.62 AK with me behind it, I generally expect to get around three to four inch groups. And that's exactly what we got here. The rear sight is a standard AK leaf style rear sight, adjustable all the way up to a thousand meters, which is certainly uh, wishful thinking for a 7.62 by 39 rifle. The front sight here is your standard AK drum style sight. Of note though, your front sight post here, which you're gonna see, is a little bit different on what you see on other standard uh, AK rifles. The reason is a lot of these Yugo parts were used on rifles and built for rifles, I should say, designed to have the uh, grenade launcher sights on there. This this rifle certainly doesn't have that. Along with the buttstock, the handguards up here are a different size than your standard AKM pattern rifles. That said, with the uh, prevalence of Yugo rifles coming into the country, there are a lot of aftermarket accessories for them. You can mount a Ultimax, makes a model for it, Midwest Industries rail, etc. So while these used to be a big detriment that they were a different size, these days I really don't see it that way because most aftermarket suppliers are going to provide an option for the Yugo pattern rifles. While there's no sling attachment point on the rear of the stock, there is one up front. So you can really just add one on the butt stock if you want to. Those are available for about six bucks on eBay and you can run the sling here on the rifle. Yet another difference between this and a lot of standard AKM rifles is that there is no bayonet lug up front. The OPAP does have a side rail for mounting optics. That said, it is a different height than a lot of standard AKM uh, side rails out there. So your, your mount likely will fit. It just may ride a little bit higher than it will on some other rifles. Disassembly of the rifle is pretty much standard AK with one exception. On the rear of the receiver here, you see this little button, and that's a lock to prevent the recoil spring from going forward or removal of the top cover until you do that. The reason that's there is because the Serbian rifles are built with having a grenade launcher option in mind so that prevents the top cover from popping off when you're firing a grenade from the rifle but on these rifles i like it because it does just kind of give a better build quality and feel to the rifle the trigger that's in the gun is the tapco single hook trigger although the receiver is cut for a double hook trigger they do use the single hook it has a nice smooth break to it right about three to four pounds a lot of folks hate on tapco out there occasionally i do myself but the trigger here is one of the things that they do get right in my opinion. No discussion about any Zastava factory AK is complete without a discussion about the barrels. Let's talk about the barrels here. These barrels on the OPAP rifles are original Cold Hammer Forge factory AK barrels. Uh, some of the best in terms of quality that you can get out there. That said, they are not chrome lined. So let's talk about chrome lining real quick because it does worry a lot of guys out there. Um, chrome, chrome lining adds obviously some hardness to it, some durability. Uh, it's going to have less erosion. but in my opinion, we're talking 20,000 rounds through your barrel versus 50,000 rounds through your barrel. I mean, if you can afford to do that, you can afford to rebarrel your rifle. But moving on, let's discuss the points there. Folks like to say for SH uh, hits the fan type stuff, S hits the fan type stuff, they want a chrome line barrel. They don't know if they're going to be able to clean it. Well, look around the world's conflicts over the last 20 years. Um, Bosnia, Kosovo, Serbia, um, what's going on in Syria right now. Watch the videos from Syria. Almost all of their AK variants that they're using over there or some kind of uh, Zastava rifle. You think those dudes are cleaning the rifles? Come on. Third World Armies don't clean the rifles, never mind rebel groups. And 
the, those rifles run just fine. So in their situation, every day, SS hit the fan. So the SS hit the fan over there in Syria, the rifles are working just fine. I mean, would I rather have a chrome line barrel? Yeah. But the advantage of a non chrome line barrel is theoretically better accuracy. I don't really know if that's true um, in practical terms. But this is still an excellent barrel and will very likely outlive you with even very minimal. reasons why these rifles are so popular these days. Number one, they're being imported in large quantities. Um, they're available at a lot of the big retailers out there, uh, AIM Surplus, um, Atlantic, they carry them. Those are excellent companies with excellent reputations. Also, if your FFL has an account with Sentry, they can go ahead and order direct from Sentry as well. And they're all coming to market right under $600, which is the last reason they're so popular. So for the quality of rifle that you get, you get an excellent rifle. Build quality is fantastic. The finish is great. Again, compared to rifles in its range, like if you compare this to a Wasser, in terms of build quality alone, much better rifle in terms of build quality. Uh, good bluing all around. There's really only one manufacturing defect, I guess you could say, in this rivet right here. It's pressed down a little bit too much. I'll roll on a picture so you guys can see that. But every OPAP I've ever seen has been like that. So I think that may just be the uh, standard operating procedure over there at Zestat, but it doesn't impede function at all. And other than that, everything is tight, super tight. Um, almost overly tight, which is a good thing. You know, they're paying attention to the details there. But, great rifle, shoots great, 100% um, reliable, really not a whole lot to complain about. But, if you guys have any questions about this rifle, anything else I talk about here on the channel, you can feel free to post below in the comment section. If you don't have a YouTube account, you can always post over at my Facebook page. But, if you guys don't have a YouTube account, with the new uh, YouTube uh, reply system and comment system, I can't reply to you. So, I urge you to get one if you do have questions. But, um, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.